square of a number is always positive or not negative, yes? So th this is known as the Euclidean metric on R. Now, I, I want to point out that any time you have on Rn, any time you have Rn and you don't, the metric is not specified, this is the one that you assume is, is, it is, unless otherwise specified. This is sometimes called the usual. So this is the usual no metric. It's the one that's understood if, if it's not specified. <coughs> if not specified. Okay, any problem? It, it, you assume it's that one unless someone tells you otherwise. But there are many others. I mean, here's another one. What if I were in R2? So maybe, uh, maybe I um, have the following um, uh, distance. So I'm going to call this distance. Maybe I'll give it a special name. I'm going to, I'm going to put a little, make a little staircase. And I'm going to define the distance between two points to be, sorry, distance between two points to be. Um, what's called the staircase metric. How about instead of taking the square root of the sum of the squares, let's just add up uh, all the absolute values in every coordinate. And there's only two of them here, but I guess you could do Rn. This, this is true for Rn. You could make this Rn. I goes from 1 to n. Now, in R2, what would this look like? Well, if I want to measure the distance between 2, uh, two and 3, 4, I would add up this length and this length, right? So that is a staircase. That's why it's called the staircase metric. Notice that using a staircase metric, you know, this is sort of another way I could measure that length. It's the sum of all these lengths, OK? So the staircase metric gives a different notion of distance for, for, uh, than the Euclidean notion, OK? So I'll call this staircase metric. Oh, interesting. I mean, there are tons of others. These are just a few. Let's talk about some other spaces that are slightly different than, than Rn. What if I were, um, let's see, here's a, an example. Actually, it came up in a, a paper that I wrote for a biology journal. Um, so you might look at a phylogenetic tree, or just any tree in general. What is a tree? It's a bunch of nodes connected by edges, and there are no loops. There's no cycles. Okay. So take a tree. Now imagine this not as a graph, which is basically, you know, you think of this as a discrete object, but as a continuous object where you can live anywhere along an edge. And I ask you now to measure the distance between x and y. How would you measure the distance? How would you do that? Oh, that's one way to do it. You could count the number of vertices between. Something like that. Yeah, it, it, it would be fine, actually, with the, the, the following two, the last two. But the first, it might be 0 if they were on the same edge. So it's, that would not actually not be quite a metric. It would be what would be called a pseudometric, okay? which you don't need to know about. But pseudometrics satisfy B and C, but not A. Uh, if it were a continuous space, you could just add up these lengths. That would certainly do it, right? That's a notion of distance. Uh, so this is the tree metric. Distance from x to y is the length of the shortest of the path between. It's well defined on a tree. There's a unique path, shortest path between. Right? There's actually just one path between. Okay. Ah. Okay. Great. Now, you might. I'll let you think about why this satisfies a triangle inequality, but it does. Here's another example. Suppose my space X is a set of genome sequences. And for the moment, I'm just going to ignore the possibility that some sequences have different lengths than others. 
imagine you have a bunch of sequences of the same length. So for instance, oh, I don't know, how about um, one sequence might be the sequence um, oh, uh, of nucleotides. Um, there are how many nucleotides? Four, okay, yeah, G, C, T, and A. So suppose I have, oh, I don't know, some sequence like this, G, A, T, T, A, C, A. How about something like that? I just made that up. Okay. What if you had another sequence that, uh, you know, was something else, like um, A, G, A, T, uh, C, A, T? Hmm. Okay. So is there, what's a good notion of distance between X and Y? How would I measure the distance between X and Y? For the genome sequence, I'll call it DG. What's a good notion? What, g give me su a suggestion. Maybe the first one that would come to your mind. Good, that's one way to do it. Number of differences, number of letters that are different. Is that a, is that a metric? We'd have to check these three properties. Is it only zero when they're equal? Yes, good sign. Is it uh, symmetric? Yes, excellent. So that's why triangle inequality. Does it? How many people say it does? How many people say it doesn't? Hmm, okay, yeah, it's worth thinking about, but in fact it does. That's satisfied triangle inequality. I encourage you to try to, to prove that. Okay. Okay, great. How about the following? Here's, a, here's another example. This is actually comes up in, in, uh, in mathematics and physics quite a bit, even some in economics. Um, and that is often you're dealing with a space of functions. I won't say exactly what space right now. I'm being a little purposely vague. But you, know, you often have functions that you're dealing with, right? So for instance, in calculus, you might be dealing with function. Here's one function. And here's another function, OK? Tell me how you'd measure the distance between these two functions, right? How would you measure the distance between two functions, right? In economics, a function might be a pricing um, scheme, right? You price commodities with prices, right? That's a function, right? OK? Hmm, how would you define distance? I'll give you a minute here to think about this. Give me a, a notion of distance between two functions, distance between f and g. Any ideas? There are several different ways, actually, but I would just love to hear some ideas. Harris? Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so you're suggesting this uh, distance. Of course, we don't know what integral means yet, but let's assume later on we will. You might say, let's look at the, dis the absolute value of the difference integrated from A to B as long as this was defined between some A and B, yes? So notice that to be very careful here, for this distance to be defined between any pair, it better be defined on uh, continuous, well, it doesn't have to be continuous integral, but, but, but just to be very nice, keep it very nice, you could define it on continuous functions uh, on, uh, on an interval a, b. Right, that's the space, a space of continuous functions on a, b. We often write the space c of a, b. Where what curly C means continuous functions, a space of continuous functions. Okay, that's definitely one way of doing it. Uh, a little worried about some of these things, but it's certainly they're still true. Uh, it, it's going to be zero. Is it true? It's 